Lesson 51, Header and Source Files. To follow along with this lesson, you will need to create a new console project and add a new file named main.cpp to it, as we did in Lesson 1. So far, all of our projects have consisted of a single source code file named main.cpp. For most of our tutorial programs, this is sufficient. However, most projects that you will work on will use many header and source files that contain C++ code. In this lesson, we demonstrate how to move code into separate files. We begin with a simple program that has two functions, one to triple an integer and one to square an integer. In the main function, we call each of the functions once. Executing the program, we see this. As we have shown before, we can break apart functions into declarations and definitions. We put the definitions below the main function. They are not required to be above the main function where they are called, only the declarations are. Now we can compile and execute the program just as before. With the declarations and definitions separated, we can move them to separate header and source files respectively. To do this, we first add an empty header file named functions.h and an empty source file named functions.cpp to the project. If you are using Visual C++, you can follow the instructions in our Visual C++ videos on how to add header and source files. With the files added to the project, we put the declarations into the header file and put the definitions into the source file. In the header file, we have added what is called a macro guard to guard against multiple inclusions. We will explain how this works elsewhere. For now, we will just explain what needs to be done. First, we put an if not defined preprocessor directive with a name that resembles the name of the file. The actual name isn't important, but it is important that the name is unique. For this reason, you will often see macro guards with a bunch of random characters appended. After the if not defined directive, we use a defined directive with the same name. Below the function declarations, we add an end if directive to close the conditional. In the source file, we put the function definitions. However, we still need to add an include directive before the definitions. Finally, we add an include directive to the top of our main.cpp file. This demonstrates how we can separate functions into header and source files. Now we can compile and execute the program just as before. In addition to functions, we will often have classes in our projects. In this program, we have a simple car class with two member functions, move forward and get position. In our main function, we instantiate a car instance, which initializes the position to zero. Next, we call get position and output the return value. Then we call move forward twice to move the car forward. Finally, we output the result of get position again. Executing the program, we see this. Just as we did with the functions, we can break our class into two parts. The upper part is the class definition, but is often called the class declaration. The bottom part is the implementation, or the member function definitions. Notice that when we take the functions out of the class definition, we need to use the class name and the scope resolution operator to let the compiler know that these functions belong to the class. Now we can execute the program just as we did before. Now we have added a header file called ccar.h and a source file named ccar.cpp to our project. Just as we did for our functions, we can move our class definition into the header file and the implementation into the source file. When we do this, we need to add a macro guard around the code in the header like this one. As before, we need to add an include directive to the top of the source file. Also, we need to add an include directive to the main.cpp file. Now we can execute our program just as we did before.